Jupiter. Uh, you have a list of the next meeting dates. I see that in June we're going to be at the medical center. Yes. Um, okay. We have the minutes of the March meeting. Okay. Anyone have any comments or questions or edits? I'll move them as ready. Okay, do I have a second? I second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? One, one abstention because I wasn't here. Okay. Sure. I wasn't here. Uh, uh, then we don't have enough. <laughs> not going to yeah, get better necessarily. Um, well, um, we can't move into the next meeting when there might be more people that would hear from March. Yeah, we just said bare minimum, so everyone who was at the BS meeting will have to show up at the next meeting, but we'll give it a shot. Okay. We'll hold no, off on saying. adoption of the minutes. Um, okay. Um, sure, Richard mentioned that the June meeting is going to be at the medical center. As many of you have probably been watching the construction that's going up there, uh, the new ambulatory care facility is supposed to be finished early this month. So um, by early June, uh, they should have furniture in there and it really should be open and ready. And so they were delighted when I called about um, seeing if we could get a tour. They were delighted to host you. Dr. Israel will come and give you greetings. One of their other vice presidents is going to give you an update about health care, health care in the 21st century. Um, and then we're actually going to be able to take a tour of not just the new ambulatory care facility, but of their telehealth center, where you can apparently do virtual doctor's appointments and visits, including psychi psychiatric care and other things. So it's going to be, <laughs> it should be very interesting. Um, so that will be it. We'll, again, we'll provide you, you know, plenty of arrangements so in terms of where to park and stuff like that in time for that meeting. Um, but for your information, uh, yesterday afternoon, the county executive kicked off the complete count committee. Yesterday was April 1st, one year from census 2020, which for the planning department is a very big deal. So we now have a new board to, um, to handle for the next year and we're actually technically for the next two years. Uh, but getting the, those least likely to get counted for the census is extremely critical for us. Not just, you know, getting the right population, but it certainly, you know, it, <coughs> helps, it helps us apply for grants and get, you know, more grant funding all across the board in, in terms of a whole host of services. Um, so there are 21 members to this new committee. In addition, there are um, a number of the commissioners from various departments that will be assisting us as well. So um, we just had the first meeting yesterday. We had somebody down from the Rockefeller Institute to kind of give an overview of you know, some of the efforts of complete counts that he's seen across New York State since 1990, which was very interesting. So we will be meeting monthly with this group <coughs> for, the next time, you know, for the next two years to um, work them through the schedules and ideas and um, education and training and things of that sort. Um, the housing any, meeting. Any word on the citizenship question? Uh, the, the Supreme Court is going to be taking that up shortly and a decision will be made by June because the census needs that wait. much lead time related to printing of the, all the materials that are needed. Yeah. And to that, the Board of Legislators is one on the amicus. Just if you want to oh, introduce oh, yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm David Martin, we're Western Security Legislator for Nourish Health Assessment. I'll comment on, on that issue. The Board of Legislators has one on the brief. Let's see. On both fronts, yeah. Maybe one of those five to four votes, and we'll see, we'll see who the swing vote is. Thank you. Thank you. So, quick 
quickly two other things. Um, the housing <coughs> needs assessment, we do have the draft. We have, uh, we have a bunch of people reviewing it right now. Um, and then the county executive will likely um, be releasing it in a couple weeks. Uh, his, uh, prob likely to be after his state of the county, which is going to be next Thursday. Um, so, and then the last is just related to staff. Um, just because many of you have known him for over the years, Mark Massari did retire at the end of last month. Uh, our accountant, he was with this department for, for practically 35 years, yes. Um, because we don't have a replacement on board yet, um, we actually were able to hire Mark back for 90 days, just, you know, like two or three days a week. So we're still working on, you know, picking up the pieces of this and, and getting through this change. Um, but, uh, you know, it's certainly good for Mark at this point to, to after, like I said, almost 35 years with this department. It's a, it's, yeah, that's pretty significant. So that's it for me. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, after our last meeting, I did reach out to Harrison, the town of Harrison, about having a joint planning board meeting. Their um, planning director was very excited about it, and uh, they were actually going to try to get here for today's <coughs> meeting, but the chairman was out of town. So what they did decide, because they have three very new members, including one, well, I guess two new members and one who is actually on um, some medical issue right now. So they were actually going to send the chairman and one of their, Joe Stout, one of their planning board members, who used to be on this county planning board in his capacity as Commissioner of Parks, they will, send, they will actually join us for the May meeting. Is Tom Heaslip still the chair? Tom Heaslip is still the chair. Um, and to supplement the, the discussion, we've now actually invited Lance McMillan, the regional director from New York State DOT, to join us as well. So I have not heard whether he's available to join us, but we figured let's hear from the state about their plans <coughs> for 684, 287, and you know, let them hear some of the discussion about um, the concerns that we've raised re with you know, the redevelopment of some of those properties. You know, I think our discussion of the teardrop, all those projects, you know, have, you know I guess, Harrison is, is interested in yeah. you know anything that we can help because it's a major part of their uh, tax base is in that area. So I think that'll be great to get some uh, interaction mm -hmm. with the local municipality. Do we ever have a or have we ever had a meeting in which you invited all of the uh, planning boards of various municipalities in for one session? I know that there's a various things that take place, but have we ever? To the best of my knowledge, with over the 25 years with this department, no, we have never even had another board in for, um, we do trainings every once in a while where we encourage planning board members to attend. We work with WIMF regularly yeah. to do that. Mm -hmm. But no, we have never actually had a joint meeting with other planning boards. So. Okay, next on the agenda is the referrals for the period February 16th to <coughs> March 15th. It seemed like a lighter um, referral list this month. Um, maybe, a no? little, yeah, <laughs> maybe a little no. bit. The, the referrals are tougher. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just was wondering if it was a result of the Con Ed moratorium. That some no, 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 not no, likely. No, no. If anything, right now we're probably going to see more because of that. Okay. Many people got applications <laughs> in <laughs> on a whim and a prayer, hoping that they'll <laughs> get moved along enough to be able to meet the 24 month criteria. Yeah, the last date was March 15, so we're scrambling for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there is one in Harrison. So. Yes, I was saying that one. Mm -hmm. yes, I just had a question about New Rochelle because it looked like there were two new projects being proposed and it almost sounds like um, you've reached a limit of units mm -hmm. from what I've oh, seen here. Right. You mean the uh, the, the, the zoning member from downtown overlay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, so what's happening is is that the, uh, you know, when they did the, uh, the master plan for downtown and the generic environmental impact statement, they had a, like a, build-out, and the build-out was set, um, allocated across the various uh, zones in the downtown area. And so now that they're actually reaching the build-out, they just need to tweak the numbers because one zone is doing a little more than the other. They're not changing the total number of units, they're just kind of shifting them around a little bit to accommodate development proposals. So it's like a little last-minute tweaking of it. Um, but that's basically what's going on. One of them, Eleven Garden, is going to be on the agenda right. later right. on. Yes. 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 
it's interesting. <coughs> interest too. The newer shell project seems to be, I guess, working. I mean, they it's unusual to put a sort of per developer project together, generic EIS, and then go to work, and they're just moving ahead. I guess all of these it seems to. Usually, you prefer to have the developers compete with each other for different parcels and stuff like that. But they seem to have succeeded. In, I'm thinking, I don't know anybody else has done that in years. Well, they do have one. <coughs> While the Balter is doing one one of the one of the towers, but you're right, RXR is the master developer and is doing almost all of the. Uh, you know, I guess they hit the market at just the right time, and they have the uh, train station, which is soon, I guess, gonna at some point going to be able to get you to Penn Station as well as uh, Grand Central Station and also Amtrak. So, in June, ULI is having a walking tour of. Projects in New Rochelle. So, oh. if anyone's oh, interested, cool. I can circulate yeah, the information. Yeah. It's a limited amount of people. Um, I think they're only taking 50, so I'll try to send it as soon as possible. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> Is this in addition to what's being built on the water? All the um, certain, like the surf, well, next to the surf club, all those condos that are going up? No, that's outside. Blocking of the, the view of Glen yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's outside of the downtown overlay zone, yeah. so that's a, yeah, so that's not counted. Sure. Yeah, they're not proposing over the 5,000 units. They're just shifting, shifting around. That's what, right. yeah, that's what I didn't understand. Right. Another, right. Another one. If they want to add units, they'll have to amend the EIS. Mm -hmm. They'll have to do a supplemental EIS, which they may not be able to do at this point, so there will be no, uh, no, no gas no connection. So. <laughs> <laughs> sewer capacity. <laughs> water, water no. <laughs> So if I can have a motion to I'll move the proof of okay. Can I have a second? I'll second. Second. And any abstentions? Just with regard to the house. So right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, that carries. Um, okay, now referral of interest, Elmwood Country Club. Uh, just for um, full disclosure, they met with um, and Lucas and I six months ago, maybe? Probably. Maybe a little more, just, little just more to give us summer. just to give us a heads up. <laughs> and a further full disclosure, uh, my longtime colleague, Nat Parrish, of Parrish and Wiener, is <coughs> applying to be a review consultant for the town of Greenberg on this project and put my name since I've worked with him in the past on various things. Uh, I don't know if he's going to get the job or not. Uh, well, I guess uh, <coughs> maybe at this point um, well, we, we, don't, we don't have a vote. Point, we don't have right? a vote no at vote this point. No. So I may in fact have to refuse myself in the future. And Okay, so uh, we recently, um, this is a referral that recently came in, it's for the Elmwood Preserve, which is um, basically the, the proposed redevelopment of the Elmwood Country Club in Greenberg. Uh, this is the fourth um, golf course redevelopment that we've seen in recent years. Uh, as you know, golf courses are, there's a trend with golf courses where some of them are going out of business or they need to change the way they operate, um, and so we get development proposals for for them. Uh, you, as you may recall, we saw um, Hampshire Country Club that was in the Maranek that was recent. Um, the French School in um, White Plains was a big one. That's another golf course. Uh, that would be, both of those are closing and they would be redeveloped. Um, Brynwood uh, in North Castle was another one where they wanted to add residential units to the golf course to keep the golf course operating. But in this case, the golf course is currently closed and they want to develop it all with a residential development. So. We'll get right into it. This is the um, the, uh, the site here. It's actually split into two parcels with um, a Con Edison like high tension wire uh, right away going yeah. through the center of it. This is uh, Dobbs Ferry Road, Route 100B. Uh, this is the Spring Parkway, so it's just to the west of the exit uh, for 100B with the Spring Parkway. Uh, there is a bus route, the county's bus route number six runs down uh, um, Dobbs Ferry Road, so there's uh, a couple of bus stops in front of the site. Um, also, if you are aware, this is a 
Frank's nursery, the Frank's nursery site in Greenberg, which is currently being developed with an assisted living project. And then there's a uh, golf driving range across the street that's not related to the golf course. It's under separate ownership. It's still operating as far as I know. Um, also, the, uh, there's the town's park here, Rumbrook Park, is um, right up here. You can, see, you can see that one from the, uh, from the spray. It has paddleboard, paddleboard courts and uh, um, uh, baseball fields. So it's a 106 acre site. Um, <coughs> the site is split zoned. Uh, so most of the site is zoned R30. Uh, the western edge of the site is zoned um, R20. Um, so it's a eight, like almost an 80-20 uh, split with the zoning. Uh, the applicant is proposing a zoning map what amendment. What is the R20 and R30? What are permitted uses and densities? It's, well, it's residential, uh, single family residential. Single family residential. So R20 would be half acre half and uh, R30 would be three quarters of an acre. Mm -hmm. um, so the applicant is proposing a, a zoning, a petition for a zoning map amendment to rezone the entire site to R20. So they want to increase the density of the site to half acre zone. Um, on top of that, the applicant is petitioning <coughs> the town to apply the planned unit development district over the entire property and then develop the site as a PUD according to the R20 density, not the current density. So this is a, a theoretical uh, subdivision plat for the site under existing uh, zoning. So with the R, mostly as R30 zone. Um, with this particular subdivision, there would be 119 single family homes that could be developed on the traditional uh, suburban style street network. Um, by rezoning it, so, but by rezoning it to R20, you would get um, 175 units with that same type of uh, traditional subdivision. So the PUD allows um, clustered townhouse development uh, with open space um, around it. So the idea is by applying the PUD to the um, <coughs> site after it is rezoned to R20, there could be 175 two-story townhouses on the site, uh, a mix of two and three of better units. So this is a uh, just a concept plan of what it would look like. The green doesn't really show up too well, but this area all over here is basically uh, green. So this is, it would all be clustered um, uh, like on internal roadways with uh, the space around it uh, kind of set aside as open space that would be maintained by a homeowners association. Uh, the existing um, uh, uh, pool and tennis courts would remain. They would add a new uh, clubhouse to the site for residents to use. Um, and also, they're proposing to develop the western, I'm um, sorry, the eastern portion here on the other side of the Con Ed right away with um, recreational facilities. Two baseball fields, a multi-purpose field, and parking that would also uh, connect to Rumbrook Park over here. <coughs> a walking trail is shown. Would that be deeded to the town? Yes, yes. They would uh, transfer ownership of that to the town. Um, and then there's <laughs> and there's also a walking path shown uh, connecting to this neighborhood over here that would go into the, um, to the park. <coughs> so this is basically just a summary of what I just told you. Uh, it would be 45 buildings with the 175 units so across those 45 buildings. It would be a gated community with a homeowners association, uh, cluster development, so 14.2 acres with the ball fields dedicated to the town, 200 foot wide open space, buffer surrounding the development, the walking trail, and the open space is controlled by the Homeowners Association. This would be an age-restricted development for buyers uh, 55 and older with no affordable units. Um, so the 55 and older would be legally enforceable age restrictions. Absolutely no school-age children would ever live in this development. Um, no one under the age of 19 years would be able to occupy a unit for more than 120 days a year. So um, uh, someone who's under 19 could maybe visit someone who's living there over the summer, but they may not stay, and there is going to be legal enforcement mechanism to keep them out. No kids. Uh, so basically what we received is just a town board lead agency <coughs> declaration. 
we responded, no objection, uh, by sending back the form to the town board um, in March. Uh, we are expecting that this will have a positive declaration and an EIS scoping later in the year. So the question is, is do you, we, we can certainly send a, um, a letter with preliminary comments now, or we can wait uh, for the EI scoping and we can send letters on the scoping. It's really up to you. Just let me know how you feel and we can take it from there. What would uh, 2025, what would the uh, comments be from, how would it fit into the uh, overall planning concepts for this? Well, um, well, basically, the the lack of affordability is an issue. We would that would be the first comment we would make. Um, and I mean, in terms of the increase of in density, it, it doesn't appear to be supported by the town's comprehensive plan, and so we would kind of defer to that. <coughs> the town's conservation advisory committee has already gone on record opposing the rezoning uh, that was submitted with the um, application materials. They believe it's not supported by the town's comprehensive plan, and uh, so we would definitely take note of that. Well, what about just, yeah. I would just cut down the number of units. Though. Right, right. We would cut yeah. down the number of units. Yeah. Yeah. But but the six thing six. is, is yeah. the applicant is asking for a pretty substantial increase in density. And right. The only thing they're kind of giving back in exchange for that is the, the park facilities, which we're not really clear that the town wants that. Right. Um, you know, I, I, I put in a call to the town. I said, is this something the town is asking for? And I was told that, you know, the, the town board is, they're not sure yet. They're, they want to feel it out and see. Uh, yeah? And also in regard to the hills, if they're making 55 older and no children, who's playing them? It's from the town. Oh, well, it would be a town park. Whole town. Yeah. And how are Because Rob Rock is next door. It's a fairly used park, right? It is. Right next to it. It's very much. Uh, it's very busy. Fields are fields. You can sell fields. You know, you could have people playing at 3 o'clock in the morning, but it's also a maintenance issue, too, and whether or not the town wants to take on and they don't have more staff, et cetera. I mean, you know, we deal with the same thing. I just can't get over the, the traffic impact mm. it would be as a heavily used area to begin with. The, the roadway, well, the road in between the current golf course and the driving range, how many lanes of traffic in each direction is that? One. 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 Yeah. That's what I yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's it's always a long wait at those lights there. <laughs> is there any mass transit access here? Yeah. Yeah. There there is bus. Six, well, yeah. The bus does stop out in front of it. Yeah. Yeah. There would be a bus stop in front because um, that bus stop would serve both the assisted living across the street and the and this development. And so how far is it going to be from most of these apartments to where the bus is? <coughs> well, they'd have to the walk same. in the interior. Internal roadways. It's actually on Dobbs Ferry Road. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. outside the site. We're talking about 55 and older people. Yeah. Well, Come community, on. so. We can still walk. 55, you know, and, and 85, you, you, you have to figure out how far it is. Yeah, the bus stop is right here. Yeah, I think the driving range would be over the moon on that. <laughs> they indicated it's privately owned. Uh, rental versus condo? Oh, this is all ownership. All ownership. Every single one. Now, it would seem that in general they have to work out density and all that, but we would prefer a cluster development to a yeah. uh, Dimension. subdivision, conventional subdivision. Right. I mean, show the, con show the conventional subdivision at the end of the video. Yeah, that was, was, yeah, here we that was crazy. Well, yeah. Near the power line, that was a video yeah. anyway. <laughs> I mean, I mean, obviously, the other the other version with the higher density is aesthetically more pleasing. This is oh, this, this looks like something crazy. Do they even include? That's what I was going to say. Yeah, that's yeah. what it looks like. Do they even include a uh, the plan for the cluster at the current density? No, no. I mean, I would assume that would be in the EIS when they. I mean, this is just very preliminary stuff that they've sent us. Yeah. And also, I'm getting very concerned about all these golf courses, which are flood absorbing, getting so, so much cement, and one at a time, it doesn't seem so bad. But with us entering a bigger and bigger flood issue, I mean, as we put more and more concrete down, we're going to have more and more floods. <coughs> it, are there other uh, developments in the area for, of similar size? No, I mean you have to look at other golf courses. 
the three that I mentioned before, they're scattered throughout the county. But I mean, this is a trend that's going to keep yeah. chugging along. There's going to be after this one, there's going to be another one, and then after that one, there's going to be another. Yeah, one. When you look at an aerial map of Worcester County, uh, of county, it's like half the area is golf courses. I mean, there's a lot of golf courses in Worcester. That was a question I had. I don't know what the inventory of golf courses is. As we're starting to lose them, I suppose it's six? loose kind of tracking, tracking to look at what we have and what. Well, I can't find a driving range if I may. My son wants to learn how to play, and for me to find a driving range, I have to drive at least 40 minutes. Where Either <coughs> up into Putnam, I'm in, no. I'm in South Salem. Well, Hansen. No, Mohansen. Mohansen has, has a driving range. range. Oh. Yeah, but it's 40 minutes in each direction for me. Yeah. The biggest problem I have is this whole 50, 55 and no kids kind of stuff. That's sort of grown up on us now. We used to have a senior project, 65 or 62, and then you could sort of understand no kids, but this business of 55 and no kids is, is not a very healthy thing overall for the county. Yeah. I mean, we're just, as a general thing, I don't know what the board's position on that is, but I don't like it, I will say that. A lot of the senior developments we see are apartment developments. Have there been many 55 and older <coughs> house developments built in the county? I mean, I know Heritage Hills, I guess, is one, but that's, that's old. Brothers has done a couple of them. Yeah. In the county? In Chapel Park Crossing. Right, but they don't restrict kids. This is the first yeah. one to restrict any kids. Is, is any the one kids. in Ryan, the new one next to I should know it because I helped approve it, but uh, I think that's age restricted. Too. Yeah, I think it's so. The exclusive yeah. development. The old Post Road one? Yeah, near, near Osborne Home. Yeah, yeah. That is definitely age restricted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. High end age restricted. And financially right. restricted. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> There's not a lot of affordable homes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, you want to take a shot at drafting uh, sure. a letter? And you've heard a lot of the comments. Uh, um, we have to deal with the reality that golf courses <clears throat> are not economically feasible the way they used to be in the past. They're going to be reused, hopefully, though, with a reasonable density and a reasonable design. Okay. So I'll take I'll take a crack at drafting the letter. We'll circulate it. Um, I mean, the timeline of this is such where you could even just discuss the letter at the next meeting if that that would be good. what you wanted to do, or or you could have a pre-discussion with email and then finalize it at the. Just the, the timeline is very general for this. Yeah, I mean, this is. Well, and what's the size of the meeting? That they didn't say. Uh, just two and three bedroom, a mix two of two and three bedrooms, and no kids. And no kids. With so no kids? Oh, yeah, people want offices. You can fill it up with your your stuff. Your pets. <laughs> 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 this developer has done similar developments, not in Westchester, mm -hmm. but at least he said he had done similar developments elsewhere, and he feels like there is a market. Well, there is now. And uh, yeah, that, 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 that this. This is this meets the market. You know who, the, who was the developer? <coughs> That's right. What's the name again? Uh, Rosewood. Oh, the name, um, Rosewood. Rose, Rosewood developers. Yeah, yeah they're, they're they're very big. I think in New, New Jersey. Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. He's from New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. I think they're um, Matt Cali related to Matt Cali. But but he also said I remember at that meeting he said that if he made any units affordable it wouldn't work. Why not? He not wouldn't say. He said but it. it doesn't the I know the the, the town yeah. ordinance requires. 10 or more units to have 10%, but since these are condos, uh, I guess there's nothing in the town ordinance requiring affordable? It, I asked the planning commissioner this. He said that it wasn't, there's no requirement for the R20 or R30 districts for affordable, and then with the PUD, there's no affordable set aside. He said that if they were to rezone it multifamily, right. Right. there would be a set aside. In their right. Um, right. So Not he was family. saying that the, you know, there would be interest in doing affordable on the site, but that under these current regulations, no, uh, they couldn't. There was no mechanism to do it. Okay, thanks. Sure, sure. Okay, we have now uh, matters for planning board action. The first is you have in your package a draft letter regarding. 1133 Westchester Avenue, which we had a very long discussion at our last meeting, and um, how do I phrase this? Um, the <coughs> developer, <at coughs> having seen our last meeting on uh, computer, was not exactly happy. <laughs> um, 
And so what we wanted to do was to certainly hold on to the comments that we felt were appropriate, but you know, perhaps um, also indicate ways in which during the discussion it came up that um, turning a office park into a multi-use uh, facility is something that the county has been looking forward to. Uh, so in that sense, it does meet the, uh, the goals of the county. Uh, the execution is something, the details is something that you know, we felt that there were, we had some comments on. So you have the letter in front of you. Um, it's a draft. It has, if, you, if you'll notice, there are some cross-outs and some additions in blue um, from an earlier version. It is a very long letter, um, so you <coughs> might want to just scan some of it and... Well, again, it's the same letter that you, your, your board has seen before. We just made it very easy for you to see where we've made changes based on the discussion at your last meeting. Okay. This was a letter, not in our package last time, but sent out by email during the interim period. Why wasn't it I would say that's why he wasn't happy. <laughs> <laughs> but that he wasn't uh, creative minded, that he looked at what we were suggesting and thought about it and wondered if it could. Uh, actually, work. actually, they, they may be going back to do some redesign. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that is a possibility. Um, but uh, we have not seen a redesign. But practically, what we talked about, some part of what we talked about actually would improve the site from a variety of things, probably cost less, create better access to the parking and better connection to the existing buildings, mm -hmm. disturb less land, keep the hydrology down, it didn't take any units away or anything that I could think of. I just don't, sometimes you look at these things and say these are logical things to be considered that, that aren't a cost, maybe save money, even. I don't know, but I didn't look at it from that way. So just, by the time we were done, I was saying, yeah, we gave some pretty good suggestions that it's probably clear that would make it better. Right. That's our job, and I think we, yeah. we did it pretty yeah. thoroughly. Uh, I guess, you know, there's an investment they had in their plan and their design that uh, I guess they were a little reluctant at first to accept the criticism, but uh, hopefully they will hear it, and hopefully they will come up with some, you know, redesign in accordance with the comments that were made. So anyway, the, I've seen the letter before. It, uh, Lucas has done a great job of putting our thoughts together and getting this out. And uh, just thanks for putting this in blue where we see the latest changes. And I certainly think uh, we are in the right track and we should be sending this letter out. Where is this in the process in White Plains? Uh, they, the city council, the, the common council met um, yesterday but they did not take action on it. So my guess is they might do it at the next meeting, or I'm not sure. I was just told by the commissioner that they would not be taking action yesterday, so that we had time to submit this letter if, if you approved it uh, today. Yeah. Any other comments that uh, anyone has? I mean, this is a it's a new type of development in, in Westchester. It's something we've been looking to see. It would be nice if it really was done really well and, uh, and uh, worked out well for everyone. And do we, do have, we do have a particular vested interest because of the Maple Moor Golf Course. Uh, and uh, clearly the storm drainage uh, study this, I guess we're saying the city needs to really examine that very carefully. But what's interesting is that it's being redone as we speak. Right. And I'm sure they're, I shouldn't have said, should not say I'm sure, but I would think they're not really so much aware of this conversation. I don't know if they would adjust things differently. Yeah, Lucas put that in the, in yeah. the memo that. Uh, Can't take on any more water. That, we're already <laughs> that the current water. design mm -hmm. Was based upon what the current right, runoff right. was. Um, 
just for my purposes, yeah, thank you. Any okay. any time frame for uh, the course opening? I saw the big piles of dirt there, so I figured <laughs> no. yeah, not for if, a while. <coughs> if everything was perfect, we might be able to open nine halls, you know, sometime in the summer. Oh, we're working on it. That's oh, but that's the dream. The summer. summer 2020. Okay, it looks like Spring Lake is going to be the next. <laughs> yeah. uh, Hudson Hills. That's too hard for me. I <laughs> <laughs> give you a special handicap. We're all moving. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think that particularly with respect to the um, office park redevelopment, that because it's like an early on kind of a development, we don't want to have the same thing happen to the housing as happened to the office parks, mm -hmm. that you slap dab something up, you make your money, you sell it, and then mm -hmm. the county absorbs the cost. And how much of the cost should the county be absorbing for the private developer to go around making floods? Well, they, sh they shouldn't so absorb any. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, that's, that's you the know, point. I mean, well, the, the plan has to, yes. the drainage plan has to be such that there's no that there increase yeah. either in velocity mm -hmm. or in volume of stormwater well, into the county. Well, we have a certain amount of cost, but based upon the balancing the public you know, interest and benefit. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, they can't just go around making floods and pick up that. Yeah, this is an important uh, project, just the way the whole Harrison right. teardrop right. is trying to get a, a you, better You can't old. just come into Westchester and decide you want to slap up and take your money and run. I was thinking there's, you know, with the golf courses and the office parks, yeah. those are the two areas that keep consistently coming up. I was trying yeah. to think if there's anything else like that, but I couldn't think of any sort of <coughs> adaptive reuse church property. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. We're gonna, we have one yeah. of them. Yes. Yeah. But to get the office park interconnected uh, with the new residential seems to be an absolute uh, goal that needs to be articulated. Maybe for the next meeting you can just give us a uh, sure. site plan that spe specifies where all the golf courses are. And driving ranges. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, well we have this letter. Um, Lucas made some changes and yeah. may have spent a lot of time on the first version. Uh, I'll move the letter as it's presented. Okay, second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Hopefully we can work cooperatively with the developer and the city and we'll come up with a better, better solution. <coughs> okay. The next is Housing Implementation Fund, 11 Guard Street, New Rochelle. Remember this was in the referrals package. And now we're talking turkey, talking money. <laughs> so we're going to introduce Jane, our new housing director. For those of you who didn't get audience. a chance to meet her last month, she yeah, joined. she came. We came. Right, but not everybody was the there. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right, yeah. Right, 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 right. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, today we're going to be talking about 11 Garden Street, a new, large, all affordable building in New Rochelle, and also about a deed for burger request for the property. Okay, so the building is east of 95, as you can see, centrally located within a few blocks of the train station and of the bus station. The property is currently on, um, used as a parking lot. This is a view of the property. Uh, the Metro North tracks are on the left side of the property. It's kind of a pie-shaped piece of property. We're going to have a 20-story um, building. Um, the developer is uh, Georgica Green Ventures, and it's going to have 219 affordable rental apartments. It's 100% affordable, and here you can see the breakdown of the sizes of the apartments. The period of affordability on this um, building will be 50 years. New Rochelle only requires 30 years. And, uh, the 
average affordability works out to be 60% of air Westchester area median income. You'll see on the 60% line, we're talking about a four-person household of about $70,000, so you know, very affordable um, units. The land is subject to a deed reverter. And what happened is uh, the county gave the land to New Rochelle, <coughs> and there's a stipulation that says if it were ever sold, uh, they, they tried to sell it, it would have to come back to the county. So we're asking uh, to, for the city has requested that the county abandon this reverter in recognition of affordable housing as a public purpose. So we might use the, uh, the land for the development. Okay, you can see the amenities. It'll have a gym. You'll see when we get to the map that there's a playground and a public corner park. Now, this development is being developed in conjunction with a development that RXR, the master developer for New Rochelle, is developing. And the other development is on the Church Division Street site. You may know there's a big... Uh, parking garage there right now that's kind of been in disrepair. So the other, New Rochelle is one of the only, um, one of the places in Westchester, I mean, in Westchester that allows affordable units in one building to apply to another building. And this is what RXR is doing. The affordable units on the 11 Garden Street uh, site will also apply to the Church Division Street site to meet the uh, New Rochelle's 10% requirement of affordable units. The Church Division Street site will have two 24-story uh, buildings. There'll be 730 rental units there. And um, the we'll have a combined IMDA for both sites with the City of New Rochelle and both developers. So, I have a question. Yes. IMDA? So yeah, Intermunicipal, Intermunicipal Development Agreement. Developer Sorry. Agreement. Sorry. So what you're saying is, is that by applying the number of affordable units going in at 11 Garden, it reduces the number of affordable units that have to go into the other building. So, in essence, almost segregating two buildings. One will be all affordable and one won't. Right, right, correct. Oh, that kind of defeats the purpose of integrating affordable housing into our community, doesn't it? Isn't it yes. also? You know, I could just say that except for the fact that the, the site of the Garden Street uh, development is in a you know, it's right around the corner from the Trump development. It's right by uh, transit. It's, right next to the transit. it's a very, very attractive site. It is, but you know, not for anything. You say, oh, where, where do you live? Well, I live in that building. Oh, you live in that building. Yeah. It kind of defeats the purpose. It's almost like, you know, building a project mm -hmm. in the well, middle exactly of a nice neighborhood. Yeah. And to me, you know, all, all this promoting of affordable housing, this completely goes counter to what the real purpose is which is to integrate people of different financial backgrounds and allow them to ha share the same experience. Right, is, is, am I missing something? No, no you're, you're, you're perceiving something. <laughs> but you know, the city of New Rochelle allows this. Yes. Many other communities do not allow it, but New Rochelle does allow this. On the positive side, uh -huh. we're way more than 10% affordable. Yeah, right. So long as the allocation yeah. for this is more closer to 30%, um, is not then also used for other it market will, rate It will be used for other yes. market rate. Uh, uh, that's that then. Uh, uh, it's yes. not It's not going to be more than 10% uh, by the time the master yes. developer is finished. Uh, that then I guess I agree completely. I think if you did get a three to one count for this building against the others, you'd say, well, that's plus. But now we're just spreading out. We Instead of spreading out, we're consolidating all the affordable units. Well, that's not so hot. No. But again, the difference is that the city's affordability requirement is 10% of the units at 80% of AMI for 30 years. Mm -hmm. We're now requiring that the developer has to keep these units affordable at, at the average of 60% of AMI for 50 years. So we're actually getting an extra 20 years of affordability, plus we're buying down, our funds would be used to, in essence, buy down the affordability from that 80% of AMI to the 60% of AMI. So what just, go back to your yeah, income. You still go back to your income chart and just show the difference between eighty percent. Yeah. So at eighty percent, that family of four that Jane talked about that earns up to seventy thousand, that eighty percent family could earn up to ninety-three thousand. 
So we're really buying, making units more affordable for families that now earn much lower than that because some of your units go down to 30 or 40 percent. 30 percent. So at 30 percent, you're going to have a couple four-person households that earn only thirty-five thousand dollars a year. Yeah, okay. But, but you're looking at apartments that are mostly studios that family of four is not going to be living. Most of the units are, are one bedrooms. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go to the breakdown. Four, yeah. One bedroom apartment. No, no. I, oh, I understand. So look, you look so at another. So we're really looking at families. I think it was of two. Yeah. One or two. No, most that's of them. Are, most of them. Are, most of them. Are, yeah. One. Most of them are one bedroom. So we can look at. Let's so go back to your income chart and look at the family, the one or two person household. So again, at, at eighty percent of AMI for the single person, you're at sixty five thousand six hundred. At sixty percent, you're at less than fifty thousand a year, and at thirty percent, you're less than twenty five thousand dollars for that single person what they earn. So they are they we again the purpose of why the city has asked us to consider this is to be able to make the units even more affordable than what the city's requirement is. Yeah, and there are units at 80%, so this is mm -hmm. not a project, you know. It's, you can see that the family of four, you know, um, 45 of the units are at 80%, so it's a good mix of, uh, of AMI. Could you go back to the slide that shows what it's going to look like? Yeah, she hasn't. I haven't got that. I was like, wait a minute. I want to see what this looks like. We haven't even gotten that. Okay, sorry. Yeah, let us let's finish going through the presentation because there's more to this story. Okay, so a total of 23 percent of the combined units will be affordable units. We're requesting funds not to exceed 23 percent of the infrastructure costs. And one thing that's attractive about the Church Division Street site is that it's going to have a almost a third of an acre public plaza. As you know, there's not much open space downtown, so that will be a real benefit. Can to I downtown. just on this? Mm -hmm. Since these affordable units are more than 10 percent, and the excess are going to be used as the affordable units for future development, correct? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Well, we they they can't that. tell us yes or no at this point. Well, if it is. You're already doing 23% for HIF, so mm -hmm. if they do another building, they shouldn't come in for additional, be able to come in for additional HIF funds until they exceed the 23%, correct? Correct. We need but 20 I don't know, I don't think that they, well, technically HIF requires 40%, but again, at the request of the municipality, the law says that we can go to as little as 20% mm -hmm. of the units and the development can be affordable. But at some point, if it, if they come in with another development and they just use up some within the 23%, they shouldn't be able to get additional HIF funds yeah, I don't, at I that don't point, anticipate. right? Well, that's fine. We can actually put that for requirement it. in. Yeah. Mm, I, don't, I don't think so because, they again, we'd have to look at another development as a standalone. <coughs> well, that should certainly be a condition if, if it turns mm -hmm. out that the board is in favor of yeah. what's proposed currently. That's fine. Okay, so just a question. Sure. Is the overcrowding guideline still one person per room? Two persons per room. Two persons. One plus. So more I mean, than you one. can have a couple. You so can have no, one and no, a half. Per room. Room. So you can have a three. Oh, for, it's for overcrowding for the census purposes, it's one and a half, more than one and a half persons per room. Yeah, no, but don't they use that for the. For, well, the county does have occupancy standards, mm -hmm. and pretty much we go by two persons per living space, but um, we kind of round that down. So the uh, our occupancy for a one bedroom could be anywhere from at least one person, obviously, for a one bedroom, to no more than three for a one bedroom. Three for one bedroom, yeah. that's what it was. So your four person family would not go would not be able should to not be able to one bedroom. bedroom. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what, um, we're re requesting is for the Garden Street site, uh, 2,001 million, uh, 2,150,000 2, for infrastructure and for the Church Division Street site, 2,350,000 for a total of $4.5 million. And you'll see when we get to the drawings what that will be used for. Good. We'll go back one second. The $20,548 per unit is only based on the 219 affordable units. Mm -hmm. So again, the subsidy requested is only based on the affordable units at twenty and twenty thousand dollars per unit. Okay, so here you can see the uh, there's about six blocks between the uh, the two sites, the uh, 
Church Division Street site is a half a block off Main Street, uh, so with 730 units, we um, we hope it will have a good uh, economic effect for Main, the Main Street business. It's actually literally on the other side of the tracks? <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Well, yeah, it is yeah. on the other side of the tracks, but yeah. not on uh, 695. <coughs> six blocks in the city. It's not next door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, we know it. We're not disagreeing. We're not saying <laughs> We understand. We probably okay. asked all the same questions already. Yes. So. Okay, so here's the uh, site plan for the Garden Street site. As you can see, there's a corner park that's open to the public. There's also a playground um, in the right side, and our um, infrastructure funds will mostly be going to those <coughs> two uh, <coughs> sites. Playground is right next to the tracks. Yeah. There is a soundproofed uh, fence in there. And Sound also landscaping. <laughs> oh, yeah, does that uh, go all the way around the development? This is, this is the site plan for the church uh, division seat mm -hmm. street plaza. As you can see, uh, there's uh, up in the upper right hand corner, there's a ramp, an uh, uh, accessible <coughs> ramp. There's uh, like in the <laughs> bottom right hand corner, they hope to rent that out to a cafe, which will have outdoor seating. There's seating and landscaping throughout the plaza. Where are the st what streets are there and where are they? Um, church, 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 church yeah, Street which, at the top. At the very top, that's the that that's line is the street line? Is, yes, Church Street. And um, then on the left is Division Street. What about the bottom? I don't know the name of the street on the bottom. I'll have to look at that. Okay, Main Street? Damon, do you know what the bottom no, street is? Okay. So that plaza so goes through from church to Main? Yeah, I believe so, but uh, can you look at the map? Uh, do you yeah. have a copy of the map? Maybe you can see on that map that, that we gave out, and I'll go look at it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting confused about where are the buildings? Okay, so on the either side of the On plaza. either side. One is going to be 26, uh, and the one white is going spaces to spaces on the buildings? Yes. Yeah, yeah the white spaces. So this is the rendering for what uh, 11 Garden Street will look like. Which it shows a little, a little washed out on this. Yeah, it does. Um, so any, any questions? Okay. Um, 23%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is the, uh, it's not, it can't just be for the playground and no. the, and the yeah. Uh, yeah, plaza. It's almost, uh, it's in excess of $24 million. Oh, what's that $24 million, what include, what's included in the $24 million? Infrastructure related to the parking garages, on-site stormwater retention, the plaza, all the pavements, the seating, the ramps, the railings, the pavers, landscaping, irrigation. At the 11 Garden Street, it includes landscaping, fencing, lighting, pavement, the streetscape, the granite curb, the standard New Rochelle streetscape, the playground, the plaza, it's public infrastructure. Completely. What infrastructure relating to the parking garage? What's the, the well, we're not paying, the, the way we're doing the HIF, we looked at the universe of infrastructure and then boiled down that we would be able to pay for 23% of the universe. And we identified that as being $4.5 million. Is the whole parking garage cost included in that? In the infrastructure cost, yes, it was parking garage, it was all infrastructure related, all non-housing construction cost identified that unit. Then we got down to the 4.5 and identified infrastructure, public infrastructure at each site that will be bid through the city of New Rochelle. So at the Garden Street, it's the street scrape, the street escape, the granite curb, it's some of the on-site the on stormwater retention, the pavement, the playground, the fencing, landscaping, lighting. At the Church Division Street, it's the public plaza. They're building, the developer is building the foundation, the garage, all the way up to a, a concrete slab, including a waterproofing membrane. The infrastructure improvements are for construction, engineering, and construction management. It's not just the sticks and bricks. Because we have to bid this, the intermunicipal developer agreement allows the county to provide funding to the municipality for the municipality to bid the project. 
It's not, the money's not going to the developer in any of these projects. It goes to the city for the city to construct the infrastructure. And and then the city will um, they'll build it. We will <coughs> hire a construction manager to do the construction management of the of the project. So it's, it's a complete project. There's a parking garage for the Garden Street units too, or whatever. The park, there's a parking garage in the Garden Street as well. And we're we're not we are not participating in that because it becomes because it has to be bid for the municipality. It gets difficult to handle a municipal bid when you're building under a building. Under a building. The sequence is a nightmare. There, it, it's it, it's a challenge. But essentially, you have to coordinate your work with the work being performed by another mm -hmm. another contractor. So, in the Garden Street, we're doing essentially the surface. We're doing some subsurface treatment um, for the storm water. We're doing the ground level, which is used. Some of it's going to be used for parking, but the the developer is responsible for the foundation of the building and the parking garage coming out of the ground. So, the parking garage work that we're paying a portion of is only on the church, the Vision Street site. It, it, we're doing pay, we're doing parking at the surface, so it's not part of the garage. It's part of the surface parking lot. Do we have a plan of the church division uh, site? I think this is the only thing. That yeah, we have. yeah, just the plaza. Just the. But, um, just the we're, um, we're looking here at the. Uh, Actually, go back. You did have you did have a plan. Go back to the other one. You had one that showed the the parking, the plaza, and the playground. Essentially, the building. Here we go. That one. Now I'll take that point. So the kid's been dying for me to take this on. <laughs> <laughs> I keep saying no. Okay. This one's easy. Garden. This is the footprint of the building. Okay, but you can see the extent. This is where the garage goes out. To. So we're going to be constructing some of the surface parking lot underneath the building, but the developer will be responsible for the building itself. The HIF will be paid for the streetscape from here, all the way to there, the plaza, the playground, some landscaping, and there is a fence. I'm not sure it's a sound barrier. I think it's just a fence with privacy slots, but we're still developing the final details of what, um, you know, construction documents, but the budget will, is a not to exceed two point one five million dollars for bid engineering, construction, and construction management. Go to the church division site. That's it. You know, where are, are we doing parking no, no here? No, no. Again, parking is under the well, buildings. Right here. The build the developer is taking care of he's gonna come out of the ground. He's got he's got parking okay. below grade. He's coming all the way up. He's gonna provide the site will have a slab with a waterproofing membrane. The city will be issuing a public municipal bid for the plaza improvements. And that those improvements are the ramps, the railings, the pavers. Um, you know, you, you, this is, this is, these are showing you steps here, okay? So it's coming way up, so these are all switchbacks. You got railing, you got retaining wall. It's an extensive amount of landscaping. Now, given it's a market, we're, our money is not to exceed. So we're gonna, we'll issue through the city a base bid and then alternates for items that we can't afford, the developer will be responsible to complete. So and that is the landscaping, there's irrigation in here, there's a lot of water. But he's gonna, he's gonna provide the base plane, literally, and then we're gonna be putting the treatments on top. There's seating, there's benches, there's retaining walls. There were sculptures in this that we are not paying for. You wanna say? Well, I just wanna go to get our bearings on the old affordable building. If you go back to the washout kind of rendering, no, the, no, last, the, the last, last slide. The rendering. The last. Yeah, that, that. Okay, so you get your bearings. That, that building on the left is very washed out. That's that's the quote unquote Trump building. It gives you an idea of, of, of course, course it's And if you go up to the right, it's near the train station. So, it's a little better. There it is. Looks like. This, this wouldn't be the first time that the county supported the city, a local city, by providing funds for a plaza. Actually, in New Rochelle, the county many years ago paid for library plaza. Mm -hmm. So because there's not a lot, a lot of downtown green mm -hmm. space. Um, and, it, and it's also not the first time that we're going to use our HIF funds, that we're requesting to use our H funds to support residences or properties off-site from the affordable. If you remember the Theodore Frem site, 
if there was a sewer line, trunk line that went through that property and then under 95, the Metro North tracks and under 95, that had dated back to 1904, but it served 113 properties on the other side because we just didn't want to have an issue with that pipe at some point in the future. We used HIF funds to actually give to the city to put a sewer line in the street on the other side and redirect those other properties to, to a different sewer district. So it's not the first time we've used the funds to leverage. Again, when we look at the development, we look to make sure there's a gap in the pro forma to make sure they actually need our funds. So, you know, we are very conscientious of the fact that these units are not probably as they should be within the buildings themselves. The city, we've had multiple conversations with the city. You know, in, in their mind, the, the RXR had not really fully committed to actually building the second tower, only because of the Con Ed moratorium did they actually put in their application to, to get gas service to that building. But in the city's mind, these units will be delivered first. So we'll actually get the affordable units, regardless of whether the other towers actually get built. And one other thing in the, in the bigger picture, if you look at the per unit subsidy that we are providing in infrastructure, right. only $20,000. 20, now, the, the settlement was a long time ago, but we're not paying for any new homes land acquisition. This is the only county assistance to this project. Is twenty thousand dollars a unit, and that only covers really the Garden Street units. It's a, it's significantly less when you compare it to some of our other. Usually, when we do infrastructure improvements in a city, when you can get the high density of a tower, you see that number come down. But we've done, we've done quite a bit more than that in uh, in the subsidies per unit on some of our infrastructure. Are there other developments in the downtown area where the affordable units were built in a separate building from the market units? The LeCount place that you mentioned earlier, Wilder Walter is building, 14 LeCount was actually always proposed to be two buildings. It's now, the developer's now bought more property and has now got a third tower. But the affordable units will be in, the, in a separate tower, but within the complex. So they'll all share the base mm -hmm. lobby down below but it will be a separate tower with multiple levels of affordability in that one building. Part of it is the financing issue associated with getting the financing because you've got tax credits that have to take ownership of that property. So there are issues associated with the financing, which is why it makes it easier to have the, the, all the affordable in one building. Uh, you know, did, did, the, uh, did the affordable, the fact that the affordable building is six blocks away in a separate building, did that come up during the Rochelle's review, the I city's review? I don't know that. Um, yeah, I don't I mean, know. The affordable building is closer to the center. It's closer to transportation in the center as well. Um, I was just going to ask, you know, seeing, seeing the first thing was, you know, these questions are all being asked in the Rochelle. My constituents were very concerned about this aspect of it, separate. Either of these two instances, that the building that has that is all affordable or has the other instance has all the affordable units, although it's, I don't think it's all affordable in that building. Right. You know, so I think both, but both instances, that's the phase one of the project. So mm -hmm. it's, yes, it's exactly. Done, these are the first units that will be built. Because we know things, you know, in Brooklyn, the land of yards, right. seem to be the last thing. Right? But in this instance, we make sure. These will be the first units that get built. Is there a significant difference between the resources uh, for the youth, for the residents to be at one location versus the other, or the resources generally? The, the amenities. Same? Yeah, the amenities. Well, not the amenities in the apartment, but the the ability to get to grocery stores, the ability oh, okay. to uh, get to to shopping or recreation. Want to or put the, the map up? This was a commuter lot, right? The Garden Street. Mm -hmm. there. Garden Street it's is a, a commuter lot right now. Commuter parking. It's hard to see. Right away, right away, it's next to a building that, that's not that building. So Guard Street well, here, so tucked, the tucked next to the uh, train tracks, but again, the station's right around the corner, like right mm -hmm. there. And uh, where's the other one? This is Vision Church. You kind of see the parking garage there, yeah, yeah. down below. Uh -huh. So that's you know, so two blocks away. I'm sorry. Where's the train station? Um, to the is there a parking garage Here. there now? Is that what you're saying? Right. This is a dilap. You know, I guess you call it tear dilapidated. It down. Oh, okay. Two older city but, the, but it's right now that it's being used as a parking lot. Yeah, for church division. 
and, and the other one is being used as a parking lot. Right. Um, again, to answer your question before about the location of that uh, plaza between, it is between church and also division is to the south or southwest here. It's so Maine is, uh, you know, quarter block away. Oh, I see. Over okay. here. So it's kind of mid block. And so it goes, so the show where the, that the walkway would be from, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming it's mid, yeah, mid roughly yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, maybe to summarize, um, the county is using its money. Is being to, asked. Is being to asked to use its money to do some infrastructure work, which I don't know if we have any issues with the infrastructure work that's being, that's being uh, called for. In order, the county is requiring that the developer reduce the uh, AMI average from 80% to 60%, mm -hmm. increase the term of the affordability from 30 years to 50 years. That's what the county is would negotiation would get. Uh, the question is, does that compensate for the fact that we're talking about a separate building six blocks away? And also, I may raise one point. I mean, is there going to be any discussion of this particular developer approach to quality of materials used and quality of amenities and that sort of thing. It's, that was a presentation that had been made at one point in a representation that would be like which developer, uh, RXR oh, sorry, or Georgia Cook? Georgia Cook, yeah. Cook. As to what kind of work they do. Um, Anthony, you've looked at the materials. Um, what I do you think? I did not look at the materials of the inside of the building. But we, we will follow the standard for its granite curb along the street. Whatever the city standard streetscape, it will be used in front of the garden. In terms of finishes in the building itself, I have not. They're still going through their final design development of the building. Um, as far as the soundproofing goes, um, they will be having, um, you know, meeting the HUD uh, day night limits, noise limits for 65 decibels outdoors and 45 indoors, so we've talked about, about that as well. But the materials used, exterior, the exterior materials may be different. I, I, I can't answer that. I do not oh. know the finishes of the building itself. You mean in the two buildings? Yeah. Yeah, they will be different. I mean, it's two different developers and two different uh, <coughs> developments, so they're, you know, they're not going to be made to look alike or anything like that. Most affordable housing ordinances do allow interior finishes like countertops and cabinets and all that to be different in the market rate units and the affordable right. units, but not to the point where the affordable units are junk, but the fact that a lot of the market units are super high grade and the affordable or would be typical type of development. Actually, New Rochelle passed a zoning amendment seven or eight years ago um, dictating that they had to have stainless steel appliances in affordable units. I, yeah, I mean, it was because when they were developing, the, I think it was 11 Burling Lane, that was an all affordable building, and they put it right in the code that they had certain interior finishes that that um, they did. I know one of them was stainless steel appliances because we, we made a comment like, well, what if those become out of style? Right. You know, and then you're like stuck with avocado green, you know. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, <thank> you. <laughs> you know but, but you know what I'm saying? So I, I remember that referral that's definitely in their code somewhere. But the local, the, the, the city of Rochelle's architectural review board is going to also review and approve the facade, and that, that's going to go through the local approval process. So it's, they're not going to allow. You know. Well, I've seen a lot of architecture review <laughs> boards approve a lot of ugly buildings that, that we've seen <laughs> come before us. Uh, look at uh, well, never mind. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, there's a lot of development in Rochelle, so the concern is really. Who is living in the buildings and how this is being planned? So I think, you know, in regard to the board, I think that needs to be addressed and put in writing. That that's really the concern. Yeah, I I've seen in the past where uh, development for low for affordable, the the structure itself, although maybe modern and and look new, the materials used in the development wind up looking like affordable housing and not like the regular regular market housing. You can definitely tell a difference in terms of 
the material that they use on the outside of the building also. And I'd be concerned about that too. Can, can I ask a question? Because the first time I've been in meetings, and I'm not sure of the protocols. Do, do you have developers come in and talk to you? Is that a good idea? Not usually. Right. So you get a feel for what they're about and what their approach is to affordable housing and you know, whether you trust them or not. Because I, I've been yeah. to a couple of the um, council meetings. Well, I've been to something to think about. Meetings. Kate, you needed to. I, uh, I think the uh, there's some been some good negotiation to get the 50 year term and to get the rate at 60 percent. And the site is is a convenient site for commuters, and it's in the downtown. It's not like it's stuck out in the middle of nowhere. So the other Kate, you needed two item would be to apply our funds with a restriction <coughs> that the unit count for the affordable units be applied only to this development so that we get a 23% uh, affordable out of the whole thing. It would be great to have that attack. Then you're, that's Kate, we need too, as far as I'm concerned. Then we're, we're getting a better standard in terms of affordability and we're getting more units. And it's, that sets a precedent that's better than now later it's applied to ten and, and uh, Richard was saying we're starting to get into some complicated things once the county puts the funds in based on this calculation, based on the 23% units and then they want to apply it to another development that gets complicated so and maybe uh, not a good precedent that we've now consolidated everything here and you could have a building that's quite even more than six blocks if you want to apply it to I guess theoretically. Want to make a motion? I would I have another just comment. I think that um, I know that we can't tell them to change their code back. I mean, it is what it is. Their code says what it says. However, um, for lack of a better phrase, I feel like it's kind of putting lipstick on a pig, so to speak. I think we're trying to come up or trying to rationalize a way of saying separate but equal in a nicer way. We're trying to justify yeah. the idea that these are going to be separate and apart. They're going to be just as nice. They're going to have just as much access. They're going to be just as pretty. They're going to be just as big or just as small. And they're going to have a park, but they're going to be separate and six right. blocks apart. Or, you know, and, and I understand the benefit end of it and what the county's trying to promote, and, and, and I get that. And you want to, want to have the affordable, and you want it for a longer period of time. But at the same time, I think that it's hypocritical to the bigger picture of the idea of incorporating affordable housing into areas that typically wouldn't be affordable. And, and that's, that's all I have to say. Well, yeah, so we have two different points here. One is to have a motion to uh, reject using the housing, uh, if I can interpret what you're saying, reject using the uh, housing implementation funds for a building that's separate. The other would be to accept using the housing implementation funds provided not only the 50 years, not only the 60%, but also that the 23% affordable be lit and that none of those units can be used as an affordable match for any future development. Okay, just keep in mind, your board is making a recommendation right. to the mm -hmm. Board of Legislators. <coughs> so what you may want to phrase it as is the recommendation would include or would be suggested to include and let the Board of Legislators ultimately make we that. We don't make the final decision. We don't right. make, we don't make it at 1133 in Wishester <laughs> Avenue. We don't make it the, for the golf course. Right. But we have a, but yeah. we could weave those opinion. two together, I think. You could say that basically the policy of, the recommended policy of the board is that the affordable units be incorporated within the buildings and not in separate buildings. And that in, the, in this case, in order to support the project, uh, the, the, we believe that the uh, total affordable units be applied just to this project so that there's a 23% uh, versus the 10% set aside. That could be a resolution that uh, states what you're saying, but doesn't say we're opposed to the project, period. Now that might not be what everybody else thinks, but that's certainly what I think. So uh, that I can put on the 
think that that helps. You want to make that as a motion? Yes. Okay, so the motion is to approve the Housing Information Fund, even though we're not exactly happy with the fact that the building is a separate building six blocks away, but in compensation, those unit, it'll be a 23% affordable, uh, uh, not to be used for any other market rate buildings to be built in the future in the 50 years and the 60%. Do I have a second? And please, okay. everyone vote. How yeah, you feel. because vote we have to you. actually incorporate language into the resolution that you already have. Okay, right. so. Right. Well, every, you know, so do we have a second for that motion? I second that motion. All in favor, raise your hand. I want to make a count here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Opposed. I'm sorry. Is there a reason? Uh, you're four. Four. Okay. okay, so two opposed, seven in favor. Um, uh, can you please add, you know, the, the reason why there's opposition? Because I think that should be stated. When we bring this to the Board of Legislators, I can very well make clear what the concerns are, okay? So we're going to actually have Jane go and re change the resolution to, re to incorporate the language that has just been added, and then we'll have Richard sign up. But when we go to the Board, number one, you have a county legislator here. No, I'm glad he's So, you know, so he can certainly make sure his, his colleague, colleagues are aware, but when we do bring it to the Board, now, the fact that we're saying the units can't be used for any other, I don't know if the county board is going to go ahead with that. But that I don't know if the developer I don't know if the, I don't know if the developer yeah. would Zora, be willing Zora, to. I'm, I'm sure has their eyes on other properties. They, they well, but then they could do another 10% on yeah, top yeah, of it. Right, yeah. And, and I'm also concerned important. about the, the dominance of very small, of small units, the, the one bedroom. I mean, a parent with two kids. Who's going to sleep in the Well, bedroom? there are some three bed, two bedroom units. There were a few two bedrooms. Um, it's very clear that they were Yeah, there were there more were two bedrooms. Bed bed okay, I think bed when you redraft, so I think when you redraft bed. this, make sure that you emphasize the fact that the board was not particularly happy with the putting the building separate six blocks away. And that hopefully in the future, that does not. Uh, Okay. That's okay. Yeah. And um, it was a matter of negotiation, and the question is, did we get enough or not? That's, I guess that remains to be seen. It, that's exactly my point, too. I think we, does this move ahead our goals? Yes. Does it establish a principle that we're not happy with? Potentially. So we don't want to not state that we expect projects to incorporate the units into the building, but given the, the things that we've talked about, then this is suitable for support. Just because the New Rochelle Code allows it doesn't mean that the county has to right. accept right. it as part of its funding of right. the development. Um, well, we had other projects, by the way, it was interesting when we talked about separate buildings. There's some that are in the same building, but the entrance they are in Manhattan. It's called the poor door. The poor door. They're in the same it's building, but they had separate entrances. That caused a fury right. oh, in, in, New, in New York. Justifiably caused yeah. a fury. Yeah. I think Hudson Yards is also going to have that also. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's some in Hudson Yards. I think the new Hudson Yards has yeah. that also. With a poor door? I think so. I read in the paper. There's nothing poor in that neighborhood. And we do have to remember that if, it's, if everything goes to 80%, while it meets a need, and that when we get the needs assessment, we're going to see, it clearly meets the need, but it meets the very high end of the need. Mm -hmm. And the fact that this is now going to go even down to 30% in some is a way of at least accomplishing a larger picture. Just to, to let you know, in Santa Monica, California, if you go to 30%, you only have to do 5% of the units, whereas if you go to 80%, you have to do 20% of the units. Mm -hmm. So the fact that that's not changed here, but we're requiring, but I am uh, <coughs> sympathetic to the, the point that this is not the way we would like oh, to yeah. see it go, in, certainly in the future. 
Correct. Good. Okay, that was a very good discussion. I think a lot of good points came up and uh, shows the independence of this board and we'll see how the county board. Uh, You're fine with that. I said if there's folks who want to stay afterwards, I think we'd like to discuss with them. What? If there are folks who want to stay afterwards, I'd be happy to discuss with them uh, what the board. What okay, that took a little longer than I thought. No, but that's I think okay. That's um, useful. We, we need to go back. Oh, yeah, we need to go back. Because the minutes. minute has joined us, so we, we did not minute, have you were at the last, from that last meeting okay. for a minute. So. Can I have another? <laughs> very important to be here. Can I have <laughs> another uh, motion to accept the minutes? I'll do that. And a second? Kathy will second. I'll second. Okay. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Okay, the minutes are And knows. the extensions. Yeah, I, I, was oh, one I, was here. Well, I wasn't here. Well, I wasn't there. One wasn't there. Right. right. The right. abstentions are to people who weren't here. Ali, and Andrea. And right. Here. Good. Okay. We're, we're actually, because of the time, um, we're actually going to hold off on the next Bronx River Park because I don't want to start something and not have a good <laughs> substantive time to be able to, to have it. So. I had lots of slides. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sorry. Right. No, I'm sorry. No, sorry. No, don't worry. Next time we this go, we'll have even more to tell you. So. <laughs> okay. This discussion was yeah. actually <laughs> more important. I, I apologize so. for. Not at all. Not at all. It was a great discussion. So. It, was. It, was. it was. It was. It was a good it's discussion. It's a teaser for next month. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and um, I know I had asked you. To, at some point in the future, we're going to get the infrastructure sewer plant that uh, that uh, Dwight had brought up. Uh, Correct. Uh, capacity issues and um, okay. We may want to at some point meet at the city of Whoa! Oh, yeah, which one? Oh, okay. Well, maybe a water treatment plant. I don't know about a sewer plant. We call it the water treatment plant. Yeah, the old water treatment plant. I meant regular water treatment. Yonkers has a separate facility for just their oh, water. Sure. Right. That's off the sawmill, I think. They're cleaning the odor up on it. <laughs> almost done. I just ask a quick question. So Ludlow, yeah. Yeah. Ludlow, yeah. Ludlow yeah. Park, yes, there is. There is. There always. That's been going on for 30 years. Yes. There's always a plan. Yeah. There's an. There's an additional phase for uh, odor remediation. Yeah. We're now at the phase that was planned for the mid 70s. Or yeah. Like like I, yeah. Exactly. Catching up. Uh, I think. Yeah. Just real quick, and nothing to do with that. Um, Bernard, do you know what's happening in Mount Pleasant, in Valhalla, the constant drilling during the week at, at the, excuse me, at the cemetery? Are you familiar with? I actually just this weekend saw that that was taking place. Does anybody else know any? Are you it's familiar with it? I don't know if they're. It's a water district. district. Okay. Uh, it's a, it's the station the line through Valhalla, the pump station. It's the, right the on the project? cemetery. It's right in the cemetery. Yeah, it yeah, must be, that. it's not Kensico. I mean, Sharon, it's, it could be Sharon. It's, it's not Gita Heaven. Heaven. It's probably Kensico. It's if you, um, you know, it's right behind, how do you describe they it? On. They drill from Monday to Saturday, 8 to 4. Yeah. And it's ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. So I don't know whether that's, you know, drilling, whatever. So obviously it's not that's the county. Nice. But I don't know what you can find out. Can you see it on one of these maps? Is it possible? You can't see it on the map. It's water. It's water district one of those residents. I can't remember. They put a water line through Gate of Heaven here just three years ago, four years ago. I don't remember where. Yeah, no, this has been going on. It stopped when the ground was frozen, I believe, but now it started again. How do I describe it? It's off. One hundred. Yeah, it's across from the yes. Yeah, it's it's across, across from the college. college. So grass. Yeah. Yeah. Across so from both seas. Yeah. Across oh. from the college. Yeah. Oh, that's neck of the woods. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know whether they're. Oh. I mean, you can see it right now because the trees and the leaves. But I don't know if they're just digging or making it so that you can bury more people. But I, God <laughs> only knows. Yeah, it's definitely a massive structure. Massive. It's a lot of con concrete. Uh, it wasn't. I didn't even recognize it before until this weekend. But we could really see it. They cleared out a lot, yeah, just, a lot of where what it. Like no, it's a track of land. Well, there's there's the cross from the kidney stone. Right. So this is when you're going up the hill. Right. Here, this has been cleared out a lot over the past few years. Yeah. Right. Yes. It 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 is parallel to Legion Drive. This is the New York City Water District or something. So this looks like there's something going on right here. The New York New York City DP has a project to. Do a cross connection between an act, the aqueduct and Kensco Reservoir. 
so that might right. be associated with that. I'll try and dig up the plan. If you can, that's it. Yeah, that's that looks like it was. Yeah. Good, Good job, Bill. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I wish you could see it better a little bit on that screen. Yeah. Okay, any other? Okay, I just, I wasn't kidding when I said that I think people should see the wastewater treatment plant in the office. Yeah, that's okay. fine. Because every time you add another mm -hmm. house here, you are adding more and more and more to that neighborhood. And just because we happen to be a relatively low income part of Westchester does not mean that we should absorb all of the stuff that's mm -hmm. going <laughs> I think Pete still said that about yes, the, we did. Uh, yes, we did. Uh, Somers, uh, anything else anyone wants to bring up? Okay, can I have a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Uh, thank you, everybody. That was thank a very you. good discussion. Thank you.